G'day folks, uh, one of the last parts of the uh, workshop cleanup teardown saga. We have a Rexroth Indramatch um, PLC and um, servo drive system to uh, autopsy. Now this came off an automated drilling machine from work, it's just designed to punch holes in poly pipe. Uh, basically what happened was the system went down one day and no amount of poking it with uh, data on the uh, PLC side could bring it back up. The drive essentially powered on, like it took power, wasn't faulty on an electrical level but on a data level it just would not respond. It was basically dead to the world. So, uh, well, I guess you'd call that lights on nobody's home. Uh, so it was replaced with a system basically one third of the size, like the motor would fit in the palm of your hand and the drive would fit in the palm of your hand and you had a uh, full size like a seven inch touch screen delta interface on it. Uh, it cost a fraction of what this would have back in the day. This whole system plus its sensors and encoders, which I don't have, was probably about twenty thousand dollars. The replacement system was about three <laughs> and it's got more capacity, capabilities and power. So uh, it's a fairly old system. I don't know exactly how old it is. Uh, there's probably a date code in here somewhere. Uh, 2000 maybe. Yeah, probably 2000, 2001. So it's old enough. It's about 14 years old. Now, I've lost the interface card that was here. It was basically like an 8 megahertz 8-bit processor, some flash RAM and other stuff. Uh, the case cover and a little error reporting module that had a series of flash chips and a couple of little little 16 segment LED displays on it uh, nothing serious uh, that's the motor that came off it it's a permanent magnet DC servo motor and yeah, it's at 2.7 newton meters uh, 7.5 amps Be the best bit out of the whole lot. The rest of it's of no practical use. Oh, there you go, build week 2002. So it's probably 11, maybe 11, 12 years old. So, uh, probably the de best part out of the whole lot. The rest of it's just scrap essentially. I mean, there's a nice braking resistor that I'm going to keep for another project. Some nice DC caps. And that's about it. This has been outside. I originally I actually threw it in my scrap bin and it spent a couple of weeks in my scrap bin and I thought, no, nah, bugger, I'll pull this out and keep it. Well, not keep it, keep it for the autopsy. Uh, I kept this because this powers up and does all its usual things. It just, no matter what you do, you can't connect it to this, uh, this drive. Like, it just won't communicate with it. Um, yeah. So, it's three phase input. Um, for such a small motor, I'm surprising. I'm surprised that it's three phase. <coughs> sorry, three phase input, but it is. So anyway, I'm gonna, before we break into this one, I'm not going to take the motor apart. That's basically what you see there. Got it. Connections. A variety of connections. The sh these ones here are shielded, so they're probably the encoder. And then you'll have one, two, and three phases for the drive. So it's a brushless three-phased BLDC motor and a ground. So yeah, you've got encoder, BLDC drive, and ground. Actually, no. Why are there pairs there? That's the encoder. Yeah, that'll be the encoder, fully shielded. I don't know what that pair is there. Uh, maybe they're not shielded. Don't know. Could also be some more positioning and other jargon going on in there. Anyway. Let's put some power to this thing and I'll show you what it does. I have had this apart before. Uh, it's a Motorola powered, I think it's 8-bit or 16-bit, um, 16 megahertz system or similar. I think it runs an embedded Windows kernel. Not sure. It was a while while ago since I've seen it boot up, so let's have a look at it. Alright, let's give it some 24 volts. Yeah. I think 
think this is as far as I ever got with it. Yeah, it won't do anything else. Because it's not receiving a response from the rest of the system. Which kind of sucks. I'm sure this could be reprogrammed to do something else, but it'd be nice if we could actually uh, quickly reflash it and use it for something else, but given that it's a uh, pretty high-end equipment, it'll have some pretty proprietary... Uh, oh, it's duplicated the 5 now. Oh, is it having a bit of a moment? I don't know. Oh, it's trying to... Yeah, it's still trying to uh, communicate with a drive that's not there. Okay, come on. It's sort of responding now. I guess it does have a very slow processor. <laughs> It's responding properly now. Yeah. No, because it can't communicate with the uh, rest of the system, it's just going to keep doing this. But as you can see, it boots up and works. It's a very basic Motorola processor. I'll open this up next, I think. Then we'll do the, uh, well, it's basically strip the board out of the drive and dismantle all that for parts. And uh, yeah, we'll have a close look at this thing. So it's very, it's essentially the same error that it was throwing up when this wasn't working. Like when it was in the machine, it this drive just would not respond to it. And now that it's out, nothing's different because it's completely broken. Oh well, expensive equipment, but we got our money's worth out of it. More than our money's worth. All right, let's have a look inside it. I've already taken most of the parts off. Uh, the main interface board. I'll get that out. Um, what do we have? We've got a buzzer, a piezo, a keypad. Um, oh, it's a display. Display driver is fairly standard looking thing. Little power tip. Um, LCD. It's got all the drivers and everything on board. Probably serial interface. Surface mount, everything surface mount. Now, now I've got to take these uh, little standoffs out. Alright. So, we have a Motorola 6838 68, 30 series processor, 16, 16 bit, 16 megahertz. Um, there's what it looks like. One of this is going to be flash RAM, other is going to be volatile RAM, so... Yes. I'll look up some of these ICs. I believe... Well, that'll be input protection okay, against surges and shit like that. Probably same with all that stuff. It just looks like lots of input protection for the analog PLC inputs. As you can see there, that's all uh, PLC control. 
this is basically a, a DTAM and a PLC all in one or HMI and PLC all in one so um, this is um, Alan Bradley used DTAM starter table access modules but this is um, a bit of everything all in one uh, look like a couple of surface mount crystals, caps, lots of caps, little tantrum caps. Um, another big, uh, looks like a current shunt or something. No. no. Something sandwiched in there. Nice big, like 125 degree Phillips caps. Everything's pretty well made in this. But yeah, they'll be. Uh, flash memory which is probably these two here and then a bit of volatile memory or vice versa but yeah it's a Motorola MC68306 FC16A processor I believe that's 16-bit uh, 16, 16 megahertz or it could be 8-bit I can't remember <laughs> I have had this apart before as you can tell but it was a while ago this thing's been sitting on the shelf for quite some time. It's a neat bit of equipment. Definitely going to hang on to it, but yeah, no idea what to use it for. It's probably very proprietary and completely useless without the rest of the system working. Speaking of which, let's get the uh, um, servo drive on the table and tear that apart because uh, that was the dead bit. This unit would still power up and work just fine, but the servo drive just wouldn't respond. All right, under the uh PCB we have one big semiconductor module and a three phase bridge rectifier. The uh, main module looks like a big uh, SCR bridge essentially. Yeah, you've got diodes and you've got uh, transistors all in one. It's interesting, I'll have to look that up. It's SKM40GD124D. Yeah. Interesting, I've never seen something like that before. P plus, N plus, and W. And then you'll have three triggers or three gates. You've got A1, A2, and A3 coming off the center of it. And, uh, yeah, and the rest of it. It's like triggering power. Oh, there. One, two. So there's main DC going in. You got DC coming out, and then you got these little triggers like gates and emitters. Interesting. I'm gonna have to look up what that is because it definitely doesn't look like a normal IGBT brick. It's definitely not a normal IGBT brick. Uh, it could be a multi-pack, but again, the, the symbols on it look a bit different. So I'll try and extract that. Yeah, hot air gun. <laughs> Your hot air desolder, and uh, pull that off the board. And likewise, I might try and save our little bridge rectum fire from the uh, scrap bin. Three phase ones are kind of rare, and well, rare in scrap anyway. Most of the time, I find uh, single phase ones. Caps, I've got a million of, I don't need them. Although, 27450 volt, nah. Plasma TVs run higher, microfarad anyway. Not a lot on there. It's been out in the weather, so I'm not going to trust the relays to haven't been have not been uh, submerged and damaged. And some little toroidal transformers. Yep, one, two, and three. A couple of little current transformers. Only two though. It's odd that they don't monitor the center. A two. Yeah. Yeah, L1, 2 and 3 are power input, 3 phase, A1, 2 and 3 are output. And it looks like you've got um, a couple more line taps coming off there as well, additional for additional equipment. Uh, inside here, braking resistor, is it 60 ohm, 150 watt by the looks of it, braking resistor, and one very crusty looking fan. Not going to bother keeping that. I will keep the braking resistor though. And uh, yeah, let's look up that data uh, data sheet on that little module there. Okay, so the pack is like a six pot um, IGBT, uh, but each one's coupled with a diode, as you can see on the side there. A little bit different. 
I couldn't find anything on this specific pack, but the other ones basically said um, DC servo drive. So uh, it looks basically. I've seen similar in uh, inverter air conditioners because they don't run AC straight to the compressor either. They run uh, DC, like multi-phase DC. Uh, that's basically what this is. The inner, inner three pins, the big ones, are the power output to the motor. The two on the end are power input, positive and negative. And the other ones are like a gate and a, a um, like collector voltage or something like that. There's a monitor voltage in there. But yeah, that's a neat little bit of kit and none of them look blown either. So it's uh, probably still completely functional, which is cool. Don't know what I'd use it for, but it can go in the box with all the other ones. <laughs> Maybe someone else can find a bit more data on it. I found a very similar one, a data sheet, but that's about it. So, in all honesty, this thing uh, strikes me as basically a, a very expensive version of a uh, inverter DC drive from an air conditioner, just with uh, PLC control and the ability to do uh, incremental steps in immediate stop and start, high acceleration, deceleration. Uh, it's just a smart, yeah, it's just a smart version of an inverter drive. Uh, DC drive, you'd also find a very crude version in a washing machine. Again, it's three phase BLDC output. Uh, BL meaning brushless. So, uh, yeah, very stout windings, permanent magnets, usually neodymium. Um, very stocky little motors, very torquey. Um, yeah, so there's a little bit on it. The more I learn about DC drives, the more I'll better be able to explain it. But for now, that's uh, my take on it. Thanks for watching.